The School Board of Palm Beach County recently approved its 2018 budget. Let's take a closer look at understanding how the 11th largest school district in the country operates. On September 6, 2017, a $2.9 billion budget was passed. And although that sounds like a lot of money, it's best to place that large amount of money in the context of gains and losses. Let's take a closer look at where that money goes. Do you recall this past June when politicians celebrated approving record funding levels for education when they passed House Bill 7069? Governor Rick Scott praised the bill and was quoted in the Palm Beach Post in June as saying, I think it is going to help all of our students. The Orlando Sentinel quoted him that same day saying, this is going to be great. The Tampa Bay Times quoted the governor as saying that House Bill 7069 paves the way for every Florida student to have a world-class education. The bill signaled an attempt to provide an additional $100 of funding per child throughout the state. An extra $100 per child should really add up, right? Truth is, House Bill 7069 was a bad backroom bill. The 274-page bill was drafted only three days before the end of an extended legislative session with no opportunity for public opinion and no chance for amendments. Charter schools are the beneficiary of a bill that requires public school funding to be redirected to them with absolutely no recourse or oversight in regards to how that money is spent. And we're not just talking about a few dollars. Over the next 10 years, this is going to cost the school district an estimated $230 million to simply fund privately financed schools. And although Governor Scott stated that House Bill 7069 is going to be great, the truth is that extra $100 per student throughout the state is actually $852 short of where funding needs to be to get to pre-recession level spending, factoring in rising costs and inflation. When we consider the total budget, it's best to think of it as four quarters, capital, special revenue, debt, and by far the largest amount, operations, with $1.86 billion. This covers the cost of nearly 20,000 employees, training, utilities, and other day-to-day -day expenses. Salary and benefits alone total $1.3 billion, or 71% of the total school district budget. There were some real positives to address in the 2018 operating budget. $22 million was placed in a salary reserve for employee salary considerations in an effort to hire and retain highly qualified teachers. More than 600 jobs in art, music, physical education instruction, choice, and career academies were funded with $45.6 million through the operating budget. However, growth comes with cost, and it's important to highlight the standard operating costs are $33 million above the 2017 budget. This was due to a couple of factors, most notably a growth of 1,600 students deciding the public school system is their best choice. 183 school-based jobs were created for this calendar year, which added an additional $11.9 million in salary and benefit costs. There were other significant increases for employee costs in the operating budget that contributed to the rise over last year's budget. Health insurance costs rose by $5 million and added an additional $1 million in workman's comp and general liability insurance. There is $24 million in additional salary and benefits and another $4 million increase to retirement accounts as a result of legislative approved rate increases. It's important to remember that whatever amount of money that sits in one pot, like capital budget, generally cannot be simply shifted over to another area like the operating budget unless for eligible maintenance expenditures. Special revenue is a section of the budget that accounts for all federal, state, and local grants that are restricted and meant only to be used for a specific purpose. This includes the School Food Service Program with a budget of $120.8 million in order to serve more than 30 million meals in one school year. The capital budget encompasses buildings, improvements, and technology upgrades. Because of the penny sales tax that passed in November of 2016, 
$818 million has been allocated for this year's budget. $536 million has been committed to capital projects and another $96.8 million to fund capital activities in the general fund. Massive projects such as financing new construction and major improvements to more than 180 campuses does mean debt is generated. $171 million has been committed to the debt service budget which is used to pay principal and interest payments. And although these are big numbers, we understand that every cent counts. More than $14 million slipping through to charter schools doesn't help. Student growth in the district will often translate into overcrowding and the need for new construction and will require $298.5 million from the capital budget. The half penny that the district receives from the penny sales tax has already been a tremendous help. The school district is able to use half of the $2.7 billion raised over the next 10 years for critical improvements to infrastructure, new construction, and technology upgrades. Progress was notable this past summer, where new roofs were added to Carver and Lantana Middle Schools, as well as K.E. Cunningham Canal Point and West Riviera Elementary. New paving was completed at Bear Lakes Middle and Del Prado, New Horizons and Wellington Landings Elementary Schools. Weatherproofing was completed at Palm Beach Lakes High School, Eagles Landing Middle School, Cypress Trails and Lighthouse Elementary Schools. To find out what's planned for your school as a result of simply increasing the sales tax from 6 to 7 cents, just go to palmbeachschools.org slash referendum 2016. Type in your school's name and see what improvements are being made here in the 11th largest school district in the country.